Hello, my name is Serena and welcome back to the Book to Movie Club. Today, we are finally getting into one day. I have so many mixed feelings. <laughs> so many feelings about this. I am excited to finally be making this video. I was planning on making it two weeks ago, but a lot of feelings came up as I was reading this book or listening to the audiobook and watching the series and I'm finally ready to get this off my chest. I do not like this show. <laughs> let me explain, let me explain. I first watched the movie one day, okay, this is gonna be very confusing. So <laughs> one day was a book written by David Nichols. It was published in 2009. And then it was turned into a movie starring Anne Hathaway in this man whose name I can't remember, I apologize, um, in 2011. And then it was announced earlier this year that the show would be coming out on who on Netflix. <laughs> and so the series was released on February 9th, at the beginning of February. And I was so excited when I heard that this show was coming out. I had to read the book. I was like, okay, this is it. This is gonna be <laughs> my new favorite book of the year, my new favorite show of the year, because I loved the movie so much. I can't remember what year it was that I first watched it. I must've been in college. I must've been in college, yeah. <laughs> I assume I was in college at the time. And it tore my heart into pieces and I was ready to experience that again. <laughs> so yeah, when they announced the show, I dove headfirst into the book. I listened to the audiobook, and that's when I realized I don't think I like these characters. They are really hard to love. And you know, they made up for it, but it was it was it was a tough listen. <laughs> I wasn't reading it. It was a tough listen. And so once the show, once I finished the book and the show came out, I was, it took me a good week to finally watch it after it was released, which is wild because I was so excited when I found out it was coming out. I'm gonna get more into why I didn't like it, but first let's talk a little bit about the plot, the story, let's get into it. So this book, One Day, was written by David Nichols. He is a British novelist and has four other books, I believe. Starter for Ten was published in 2003, that was his debut novel. The Understudy was in 2005, Us, 2014, and his most recent novel was Sweet Sorrow, published in 2019. He actually also wrote the screenplay for the movie. And in an interview, in an article, he mentioned feeling like the movie, because it had to be cut down, mind you, this book was a 449 page novel. The story had to be cut down for the movie. And so he described the film as being kind of a spark notes version of his original movie. I think it's really interesting that he was able to write the screenplay himself. I've actually never, Heard of that before? I'm sure it has happened before, but I'm not familiar with any authors who then went and wrote the screenplay for the movie adaptation. If you watch the movie and have read the book, it makes complete sense because it's so much like, they're so similar to each other. When I was listening to the audiobook, I could picture the scenes from the movie. They're so similar. Um, and I really loved that. I was like, oh yeah, I remember. I, all the memories are flashing back, mind you. It, I maybe watched this movie 10 years ago. I don't even know. <laughs> but all of the scenes from the book, I was like, oh, I can picture that. I remember that. I remember that. So I loved that aspect of the book, but I didn't like the characters. The plot's amazing. The characters are terrible. Keep in mind, I actually did not end up rewatching the movie for this video. I was going to, and I was actually thinking about doing so last night, but I, the memory that I have of this movie, I want to keep it as it is. I'm going to rewatch it eventually, and maybe I'll make a short about it once I do, but I really, re I remember loving this movie, and I don't want to ruin that for myself, so I'm not going to rewatch it anytime soon. But the movie is um, an hour and 47 minutes, and for some reason I thought it was longer, maybe because this book is so long, I was like, they probably made this movie two hours um but it's an hour and 47 minutes so it makes sense that he's like this is just the spark notes of it all but the 
show is what 14 episodes <laughs> but they're only like 26 minutes I think they're like half an hour episodes and still everything felt so fast like in those 30 minutes there wasn't enough time everything just felt like this and even with the pace being so quick I was bored <laughs> And again, it's probably because I don't like these characters. I really wanted to enjoy this and I'm really disappointed that I didn't. I'm getting ahead of myself again. Let's talk about the plot of this book. One Day is about Emma and Dex. They are friends who meet each other at the end of college after graduation or after university. Um, after university graduation, they're at a party and they run into each other and spend the night together. And they are friends... They continue being friends for the next 20 years. <laughs> this is going to be spoilers, okay? I'm not even going to try to not get any spoilers. So the book, the film, and the show go on to show their friendship over the next 20 years after meeting at graduation. There are a lot of ups and downs in both of their lives. Um, Dexter doesn't really know what he wants to do with his life. He becomes a TV personality and his family is kind of disappointed in what he is creating. Um, Emma thinks she's going to be extremely successful and she ends up working at a Mexican restaurant in London where the food is apparently terrible, <laughs> which doesn't surprise me. Mexican food in London is not good. Um, so yeah, they are both in very challenging places throughout these 20 years. Um, Dexter gets married and has a child not really wanting to and Emma is in a relationship that she doesn't really like as well. But then eventually they find themselves together. There should have, you know, their relationship should have happened maybe a long time ago, but they were both in like right place, wrong time kind of a scenario for their relationship. So finally they get together after 20 years of friendship and then Emma gets hit by a car and dies and it's really heartbreaking <laughs> it's really sad when I first saw the movie I'm telling you I bawled my eyes out I was so sad and it felt like I wasn't expecting it obviously and it just felt like they wanted to hurt me it felt personal and it maybe was <laughs> and then in reading the book I already knew what was going to happen and I was listening to the audiobook at like 1.75 speed because I hate how slow people read when I'm listening to the audiobooks anyway. So the Emma's death felt really fast as I was listening to the audiobook. So it didn't really hit people. Y'all know if you've been watching these videos, I cry from books all the time, but it didn't hit the same because of the pace that I was listening to it. But the show, again, I already knew what was going to happen and I still shed tears. It's so heartbreaking when Emma dies. It's so sad. And then I, I want to talk about the ending of the show because it is a little bit different from what I remember the ending of the movie being as well as the end of the book. And that also made me cry my eyes out. But let's get into why I hate Emma and Dexter. So in a lot of reviews of every version of One Day, people talk about how unrelatable these characters are. And it's very true. Dexter comes from money. Um, he becomes a TV personality. He becomes rich and famous and there is really nothing relatable about him. Emma is pretentious <laughs> and, and a little obnoxious and self-deprecating and you know she should be relatable but it's hard to like her. I think Anne Hathaway in my opinion the the movie has terrible reviews. The movie on Rotten Tomatoes I think has a 23% which felt harsh. Let me fact check that. It has a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I was surprised by, but mind you, I haven't watched it in a long time and I am a rom-com girl, so I'm going to rate it higher than most people. But <laughs> um, Anne Hathaway as Emma was fantastic, but maybe I just love Anne Hathaway. Emma in the book is so annoying. She's like this almost like fake liberal. She's teaching out of school. They're putting on a play and I can't remember what the line was exactly. But she makes a statement that made her seem really understanding of these students that she's working with. But then in the next 
sentence she is just so ignorant <laughs> and I was like oh, okay she's not as smart as I thought she was um and so I didn't like her in the book and then Dexter just makes mistake after mistake after mistake and is just struggling and it's just hard to be understanding of the choices that he makes um even though he's going through a lot it's just really hard once I finished the book I realized I did not like these characters the casting of the movie did a good job from what I rec can recall of making these characters more likable but I don't think the show did a very good job nothing against these actors they were great but there was no connection I didn't y'all let me know I didn't feel any romantic chemistry between the two of them at all the woman who played Emma like it she hated Dexter so much throughout the show it seemed so when they finally got together especially because it's for such a brief period there really is no it happens which is what happens in the book no there's a little bit more there's more that happens in the book but yeah it just happens so quickly and it's hard to believe that Emma is in love with this person I know Dexter has been in love with her for the longest he didn't want to admit it but I knew it but Emma just like do you like this man I couldn't see it <laughs> anyway so in the show Dexter is played by Leo Woodall and Emma is played by Ambika Maud I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly I apologize if not they're both very talented I love them but the chemistry wasn't there for me I couldn't see it. The hatred I could feel and see and they were great with that part but the love connection between the two of them I wasn't getting. They also did this sort of blind casting for the show as Netflix and Hollywood love to do. Um, Emma is not described as being a person of color in the book and is played by Anne Hathaway in the movie. But in the show she is played by a woman of color. Ambika, 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 I apologize, is Indian. And a, I just would imagine a lot of challenges would come up for an Indi Indian woman in the UK in the 80s. And they're just not touched on at all. We don't know anything about her experience. And I just, if you're going to make this character brown, you need to talk about it we need something but of course that's not in the book so they didn't add it to the show and I feel like it was a mistake we also don't see her parents unless I was mistaken unless I missed it I was watching the show on multiple devices maybe I accidentally picked up where somebody left off I don't know but we don't see her parents at all in this show which is strange to me because they come up in the book. I'm not sure if it was only on the phone where they come up. But there are times when Dexter calls her parents and that scene isn't in the show. I just feel like they had more. Her family was a bigger part of her life in the book and not at all a part of her life in the show, which is disappointing. I say all of that to say I realize Dexter is the main character of this show and I don't like that. <laughs> this is a show about Dexter making mistakes, falling in love, and grieving. And I just feel like it does a very big disservice to Emma's character and to us as viewers because this is not all about Dexter, but so much of it felt like it was about Dexter. I understand Emma dies and so the ending has to be about him but all of the things before that a lot of Emma's life is just left out of the show it was a choice and I don't understand it an article in the New York Times stated that the series go ha, takes a deeper dive into the lives of Emma and Dexter and as I said I think that's only true for Dexter I don't think they showed enough of Emma's life for us to get a well-rounded perspective or view of who she was as a person and that is a shame. So that's my rant about my feelings <laughs> about one day. This was probably very unclear and chaotic but I just had to get that off of my chest. Thank you for providing me the space to do so. 
if you didn't like one day as much as I did, please let me know in the comments. If you loved it, be nice in the comments. <laughs> I can understand why people would love it. I wanted to love it, but I just don't think it was that good. So yeah, that's, I'll, I'll leave it there. If I end up rewatching the show, I'll come back and let you guys know. I mean, if I end up rewatching the movie, I'll let you guys know. But I still, I just want to hold the movie as the special thing that I loved when I was in my early 20s and let it be that. So I'm probably not going to rewatch it. But yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching today's video. Next, we will be talking about the expatriates slash the expats, the book turned series on Amazon Prime. So if you're interested in talking about that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And I'll see you then.